Okay, so we are going to talk about multiplication today. So we're going to do multiplication by one digit. So that could be two digits by one digit, like 57 times 3. It could be three digits by one digit, like 246 times 4. Or it could be four digits by one digit, like 2,437 times 6. So we are going to start out with the four-digit one, because if you can do it, then you can do any of the smaller ones. So there are three different strategies that we're going to look at. We've got area model, standard algorithm, and partial products. So your adults at home, when they're helping you with it, they're more than likely going to know standard algorithm or something super close to it. That's probably what they learned in school, and they used to teach it one way. So if they're showing you this way, listen to them. They know what they're doing. Partial products. It's like if area model and standard algorithm were both standing at opposite ends of the room and they ran into, into each other super fast and made a whole new um, type of multiplication. That's what partial products is. It kind of combines the two. So I'm going to start off with standard algorithm here in the middle. It is super, super important that you get really, really fluent with your multiplication facts because if you are struggling, if you get a problem that's 4 times 8 and you're having to count it out on your fingers, it's going to take you a very long time to get problems like this accomplished. So, 2,437 times 6. Notice I put my, my number with more digits on the top. We're always going to do that. And I have aligned my place values because I am multiplying. This has, is, takes up four different place values, but I'm multiplying it by something in the ones place. That's important. So the first thing I do is I'm going to multiply this 6 out to each of these numbers, but I'm going to start with my smallest number, with my number with the smallest value. So 6 times 7, I think this is the hardest fact there is to memorize. It's one that I always struggled with. So I know that 6 times 7 is 42. But when I have the number 42, I cannot come down here and write 42. It's just like when you do addition or subtraction. You can't do that if you have multiple place values and you still have numbers to work with. So I can put my 2 here because I know that 42 has 2 1s and 4 10s. That means I need to move my 4 up above my 10s place. Let me try and scoot that in and see if it makes it any easier for you all to see. So I need to move my 4 up above my 10s place. So now, there is nothing else that I can multiply to that one's place. So I'm going to get rid of it so I don't have to look at it anymore. Now I'm doing 6 times 3. So I know that 6 times 3 is 18. So I'm going to write an 18 here and circle it. Because I have something that I carried, I now need to do 18 plus 4. I have 18 groups of 10 from doing 6 times 3 tens. But then I need to add four more groups. So 18 plus 4 is 22. Well, that's multiple digits. So I can put my 2 down, carry my 2 over here across on top of my 4. My tens place is finished. Now I'm going to do 6 times 4. I know that 6 times 4 is 24. So I'm going to write that and circle it. Now... What do I need to do to my 24 and my 2? Think about what I did over here to my 18 and my 4. I didn't multiply them. I added them. So my 24 and my 2, they need to be added together. I know that 24 plus 2 is 26. So I'm going to put my 6 here. Carry my 2. I'm finished with that 4. I'm going to go ahead and put my comma because I've got three numbers. So one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they do this is they try and multiply these numbers. We need to add them. My last step for multiplication, 6 times 2 is 12. I'm going to do 12 plus 2, which I know is 14. I'm finished with this 2. So 2,437 times 6, we have figured out to be 14,622. That is using standard algorithm. Now, if I want to look at it, area model, and um, area model is how a lot of people prefer to do it. The hardest part about area model is getting it set up. Once you've got it set up, it's not too bad. So I'm going to look 
My number with more digits, it has how many digits? It's got four. So when I draw my box, I know I need to have four spots. So it's four times one. So that means I need a four by one box. Because four digits times one digit. Here's where it gets super important that you remember place value. When I'm putting this up here, I can't put a two because that number doesn't really represent a two. It's a two in the thousands place. So instead of putting a two, it will be 2,000. The four, I can't put a four because I have to remember the value of that digit. It's in the hundreds place. So the value is 400. I have a three in the tens place. The value of the three is 30. And then a seven in the ones place, the value of that is seven. I'm multiplying them all by six. So when you set it up, you've got the value of each number for your larger or your one with more digits on top and your one it's only going to be one or possibly two, and um, when we get moving into that, we'll be on the side. So sometimes I have my students put arrows in the boxes before they ever begin multiplying, because then they know which two numbers they're looking at. So when I multiply, the number I want in this box is 2,000 times six. Now don't let that freak you out. We've looked at zero multiplication, uh, or multiplying by powers of 10 a few weeks ago, I know six times two is 12, and I know I need to add these three zeros to the end of it. Same thing. If I pretend like those two zeros don't exist, I'm gonna plug them at the end. Six times four is 24, plus two zeros. Six times three is 18, and I'm gonna bring down that zero. Six times seven is 42. So now I've broken this down, my next step is to add each of these products up. And I know that this is the answer that I'm looking for. So we'll see if we get it. Zero plus zero plus zero plus two is two. Zero plus zero, eight plus four is 12, carry my one. One plus four is five, five plus one is six. 2 plus 2 is 4, bring down my 1, 14,622. So far, that's where we're at. We've got the same answer using two strategies. Now, we're going to look at partial products. So, when I do partial products, I set it up the same way um, that I set up my standard algorithm. 2,437 times six. When I bring it out, I drop a line down the side. So when I set up my partial products, I do all of my setup work before I do any multiplication. So what I mean by that is I know that the first two numbers I'm gonna to multiply together, I come out here and put them in parentheses, is six times seven. I'm taking care of that seven. Then I know that the next two numbers I multiply, here's what tricks people. I am multiplying six times, not three, but think back to your area model. Three in the tens place is 30, taking care of that. The next one that I multiply is six times this four, but it's not four, it's four in the hundreds place, so six times 400. The last number that I multiply, Six times, it's two in the thousands place, so six times 2,000. Now, I've broken all of this down. Now I'm ready to multiply. Six times seven, we've already talked about it, that's 42. Six times three is 18, plus a zero at the end is 180. I know I'm gonna have two zeros at the end of this one. And then six times four is 24. And I'm going to have three zeros at the end of this one. And then six times two is 12. Zeros, we've got my two. That would be 12 and carry my one. One plus one is two, plus four is six. 
2 plus 2 is 4. Bring my 1 down. Once again, I got 14,622. It does not matter which strategy you use, as long as you know what you're doing and it's effective for you every single time.